okay all right good morning viewers good morning everyone from nigeria and uganda my name is toki bamuda sometimes i am qualified to practice law in nigeria i advise businesses uh, uh, companies in making major investment decisions and also advising them in certain commercial transactions and I prepare uh, commercial agreements and other documents for businesses across borders, whether nationally or internationally. Um, I'm majorly into corporate and commercial practice, and I'm also experienced in uh, civil litigation and as well criminal litigation in, in all Nigeria courts. So today, they on the law series, I'm joined by the Legis Innovations Limited. Donald is a lawyer, a poet, and an entrepreneur. He holds a bachelor's of law degree from Makawa University. Diploma in legal practice at the law development. He is a co founder and advocate, leading law firm in Uganda. Donald is passionate about governance, social entrepreneurship, and pan Africanism. Thank you for joining me, Donald. Uh, you're very welcome uh, to him. Thank you for hosting me. Thank you very much for joining me. Uh, Hello. And even of the show notice, you are still able to be here today with me. Yeah, thank you much for joining me, Donna. Yes, Tohiba, I can hear you now. Yes, okay. So today, majorly, we'll be discussing about doing businesses in Nigeria and Uganda. I will be I will be talking about doing business in Nigeria. Why don't I be really handling a section of doing business in Uganda? And I hope that at the end of this session, you will have been able to take away a few things about investing in these two African countries, and also you will be motivated to to starting or to investing with this uh, in these uh, two countries. And I hope the information provided in this in this uh, meeting will be of uh, will be very useful to you. Let me also say that this information uh, immediately for uh, further purposes, they are they are to be taken with further consulting. These are majorly basic information about investments in these two countries. And if you are considering investing in these two countries, you could seek out further professional services. My team and I in Nigeria here are going to provide you with other to require what they do to provide you with Uganda. So thank you very much for, for joining us and for being in this video. Thank you. Yes, Donald, are you with me? Yes, I am with you. Okay. okay. So, uh, I'm, uh, Nigeria, West Africa, is a middle income mixed economy and an emerging markets with expanding manufacturing, financial service, communications technology and entertainment sectors. It is ranked as the 27th largest economy in the world in terms of nominal GDP and the 24th largest economy in terms of purchasing power parity, PPP. Nigeria is one of the largest economy in Africa. It will emergent manufacturing. It will emergent manufacturing sector became the largest on the continent in 2013 and it produces a large proportion of the goods and services for West African continents. 
in 2013 for West African subcontinent. In addition, the debt to GDP ratio is 16.075 percent as of 2019. Nigeria GDP as purchasing power parity has almost tripled from 170 billion dollars in 2000 to 451 billion dollars in 2012. Though estimates of the size of the informal sector which is not included in official figures, put the actual numbers closer to $630 billion. So Nigeria is welcoming to investment in all sectors and with increasing uh, globalization, the world has become a small village where cross-border investment and sustainability are the focal points of economies. Nigeria is a country that cannot be ignored by any investor looking for long-term growth. So, welcome to Nigeria, one of the potential power economies of the world, and West Africa's choice, destination for growth and investment. Yes. So with this uh, background, what should you consider when you are thinking of coming to Nigeria to invest business in Nigeria. So majorly, you need to consider a number of things. You need to consider a number of things. And one of the major regulation or the major body in charge of registering businesses in Nigeria is what we call the Corporate Affairs Commission, the CAC is one of the bodies charged with registering businesses and uh, registering companies in Nigeria. The Corporate Affairs Commission, the CAC. The CAC operates an online portal at www.cac.gov.ng where if you are looking to register a business in Nigeria, a company, one of the processes you have to first consider is or reserving your business name or reserving the company name on the on the CAC portal. You need to consider reserving the company name on the CAC portal. And this name reservation uh, can be done within four hours if we if request if your request is submitted before 2 p.m. on the business day. And it's only cost uh, some of five uh, a company. So, and within four hours, your request can be confirmed whether the available the name of your company or the, the preferred name of your company is available or not. So, within four hours, this can be made on uh, www So also, if you are considering uh, coming to Nigeria for investments if whether you are you are a company that has been invited by the government to whether to carry out some essential services. So there are some instances where a company need not register as a as an entity in Nigeria. So according to the, the major legislative instrument also in this regard is a Companies and Highlight Matters Act, what we call the CAMA. The Companies and Highlight Matters Act also created the, the Corporate Affairs Commission in Nigeria. So it it's, provides the regulation for registering your company, the procedures that you need to follow. And also, if you are considering uh, coming to Nigeria, whether you have been invited by the government to carry out some activities there are some instances where you need not register your company uh, as a, as a, you are exempted from registration or so you are exempted from registration and these instances come on the, the companies and allied matters act that uh, these are instances where you have been invited to to uh, to carry out some essential services uh, whether by the government or, uh, or by the federal government or by the state government. And this comes under Section 56, one of the Companies and Allied Matters Acts. 
So foreign government owned companies involved exclusively in exports promotion activities. That's under section 56.1 and exempted from registration. Engineering consultants and technical experts on the invitation of the president or government agency or individuals. This comes under section 56.1. D of the Companies and Island Matters Act, they are also exempted from registration. Foreign companies invited to carry out specific loan projects for donor countries or international organizations are also exempted from registration. And foreign companies on the invitation of the government of Nigeria to execute a specified individual project are also exempted from registration. So if your company falls into these four categories, you are exempted from registering under the Companies and Other Matters Act. So you can carry on your business. You can apply to the president via a letter after consulting with your lawyer in Nigeria. You can apply to the president that your company falls into these four categories. Therefore, you should be exempted from registration. So your application can be done through a letter from your lawyer, whereby he writes to, to the office of the president that you have been invited and you, uh, to carry out certain projects and your, your company falls into these four categories. Therefore, you need not go through the stress or the expenses of registration. However, if your company does not fall into these four categories, exempted under Section 56 of the Companies and Allied Matters Act, you will be mandated to register your company as a Nigerian enterprise or you can carry on your business. The way the official, as I said, you can start the process on the company, uh, the Corporate Affairs Commission online portal. And this online portal is accessible at www.cac.gov.ng. The process reserve your name, your company name, it should be reserved. And then the processes are also stated on the website after you reserve your name, after it has been confirmed that this particular name is available for registration. Then you can proceed to register your businesses by submitting all the necessary documentation uh, and, by, and by filling all the necessary forms that are required of you. So such as CAC, statement of share capital of your company, uh, the return of allotments, uh, particulars of person who is the company secretary of the company, uh, declaration of compliance with the requirement of the uh, company uh, and highlight matters acts. So particulars of persons who are directors of the company. These are all the necessary when you register your company. Also, if you're coming into Nigeria to do business, you will want to consider, you will want to consider importation of, uh, or importation of maybe technology or machineries or importation of capital, importation of capital, and then immigration policies, you will want to consider visas that should be gotten for your, for your, uh, for your employees or for your directors or CEOs who are coming into Nigeria. So when we are talking about business visas, the temporary work permit is issued to enable foreign nationals to gain entry into Nigeria for the purpose of executing short-term assignments. It's a single entry visa, which is usually given for a period of three months. So it can be extended once for another three months upon application. So you will want to see whether what you're coming to do falls under the temporary work permit or it falls under business visa. Business visa is used, is issued mainly to enable foreign nationals to attend meetings in uh, business meetings in Nigeria. So if you think you are not coming to stay long in Nigeria, then you might want to get a business visa. But if you think that you are going to stay for a period of three months, uh, which can also be extended for another three months, making a total of six months, then 
you'll be required to get a temporary work permit. Also, we have the expatriate quota that these uh, companies seeking to employ expatriates must first apply for and be granted an expatriate quota. The expatriate quota scheme is designed to prevent the indiscriminate employment of expatriates where they are qualified and suitable Nigerians to fill such positions. So all countries also in Africa will have a similar position whereby this is to uh, enhance the employment climate of each country. So there is an expatriate quota, there is a particular level of expatriates that you are allowed to employ. And also you also have the obligation to employ Nigerian citizens as workers in your company. Also, we have the combined expatriate residence permits and access and alien cards, SEPAC. So every non-Nigerian who enters Nigeria legally and who wishes to reside and or work in Nigeria must make an application for a SEPAC. This is the combined expatriate residence permits and alien card. The SEPAC is issued and is valid for three years and also becomes renewable. So these are some immigration uh, and employment uh, uh, matters that you need to consider when also coming to Nigeria to, to carry out investments. So where are the investment opportunities that you might look to consider in Nigeria when coming to Nigeria? Uh, majorly, there are a number of investment areas that you can look uh, in the sector, if you want to do a sector analysis. Uh, you know, the oil, Nigeria is, the energy sector is one of the booming areas in Nigeria. You know, Nigeria is blessed with natural gas, oil. So uh, as an investor, you might want to consider these areas that is uh, investing in, in the offshore and onshore areas of Nigeria. So we have a number of international oil companies who are dealing in this se sector. Also natural gas, natural gas and related hydrocarbon production presents a huge opportunity as this subsector is yet to attract sufficient capital investment and infrastructure in gas facilities. So this is also a, a booming area that you can also consider investing. Also power is another area that you can consider investing, investing in power. So uh, this is the country has embarked on a power sector reform and will need a number of private individuals and companies also to key into the power sector in Nigeria. Hydrocarbon is also another sector that you might consider investing in. So uh, this is also another area that is worth investing in Nigeria. Now, uh, so you might want to also look into entertainment and media. So the Nigerian media and uh, space is also growing. So, and it contributes to 2% of our GDP. Uh, that is entertainment and media contribute to 2% of Nigeria's GDP. So you might also want to consider investing in this area in terms of media advertising, uh, also the Nigeria film industry. Uh, so these are a number of investment areas that you can consider. So what investment opportunities can you look into in the entertainment and media space? You can link to the construction of additional cinemas, theaters, and auditoriums for movies, plays, dramas, and entertainment tours. You can consider investment in infrastructure and state-of-the-art equipment required for making film studios equipment required for computer generated imagery, digital audio, video recording, and mixing. So these are a number of areas that you can consider in Nigeria. So tourism, tourism is also another area that is uh, attractive in Nigeria. So we can consider beach and coastal resorts, uh, developments, uh, protection of national parks and game reserves. So development of hotels, restaurants, amusement parks, and conference centers. So these are also a number of areas that you can consider investing in 
water equation and ecotourism opportunities, package tour services and mountain holiday resorts, development of caves, tunnels, waterfalls, and spring water. These are also other areas that you can consider investing in. Real estate is also another area that is, that is booming in Nigeria. So investment in, there is this residential home gap uh, because you know the gap in residential home is estimated to be in a deficit of about 17 million houses, housing units. So this is also another area that you can also consider when coming into Nigeria. So you can talk about residential properties, commercial office properties, especially in major cities like Lagos, Abuja, and Port Harcourt, and also industrial properties. So these are also these are also uh, other areas that you can also consider investing in. Yes, so, uh, so Donald, let me, let me, let me, give me a minute. Uh, let me make, okay. yes, so, uh, so these are areas, real estate, you can consider residential properties, commercial office properties in Lagos, Abuja, and Port Harcourt. Industrial properties, you can also consider this commercial retail and hospitality projects. So uh, these are areas that get, um, provide related construction services, uh, real estate development across all subsectors. Providing risk capital and bank financing for real estate. So these are areas that you can consider in when coming into Nigeria. So information comes, so investment opportunities exist in the infrastructure for, for, uh, for hardware supplies, or support and maintenance services, e-business and online advertisements. So these are areas also in the ICT sector that you can consider investing in. And then agriculture. Agriculture is one of the booming areas in Nigeria also at present. Now Nigeria has a wide expanse of fertile land uh, water supply and rainfall. So, and the government is seeking to develop Nigeria's agricultural sector to make it more attractive for global agriculture, given the rising demand for food, both locally and globally. So, and investment opportunities are opportunities for professional consultation and research in agri-business practices. In for substitution of agricultural outputs is a key strategic pillar to boost agriculture. And uh, rice farming and processing this is also another area that you can, because Nigeria population is a huge uh, co uh, rice consumption population. So a lot of people eat rice in Nigeria. <laughs> so uh, also you can consider agricultural uh, mechanization uh, so this also presents an investment opportunity. So majorly, these are the key areas that you can consider in when coming into Nigeria. There are a number of other areas as well, but these are the key areas that you can consider when coming into Nigeria. So a number of these, and uh, we we'll talk about the immigration requirements and that uh, what you need to consider. So. If we look at this, and then we, we might want to consider the tax system in Nigeria, the tax system. And uh, the major uh, things that you need to look at, uh, the major tax system are the uh, legislation include what we call the Companies Income Tax Act. The Companies Income Tax Act. So the Companies Income Tax Act, the short form is CITA. The CITA forms the legal basis for the taxation of the profit of companies, other than companies engaged in oil exploration and production in Nigeria. 
So CETA imposes upon the profit of any company acquiring in derived from and bought into uh, uh, received in Nigeria in respect of a trade or business. So companies are taxed at the rate of 30% of taxable profits. So the CETA is the major uh, company taxation uh, legislation. Also other ones include the value added tax, the petroleum profit tax act, and some other, some other uh, tax legislation. We have the personal income tax act, which, are, which provides for the taxing of a taxing of individuals, so employees and things like uh, and other people like that will come in under the personal income tax act. There is also the issue of withholding tax, whereby, uh, you know, as you know, the WAT withholding tax is an advanced payment of income taxes deductible from payments made on qualifying transactions. So the remittance is made in the currency of transaction to the Federal Inland Revenue Service or the relevant state internal revenue service. So the Federal Inland Revenue Service should be made within 21 days and also to the state inland internal revenue service, the withholding tax should be made within 30 days respectively. So uh, also there's a, the Federal Inland Revenue Service is the federal agency in charge of collecting taxes for the federal government while the state internal revenue service collect taxes for the state or respective state government. Okay. Yes, and then there is a value added tax. Value added tax is charged at the rate of, according to the new finance act that was signed in 2020 by the federal, by the president, tax at the rate of 7.5%. Initially, the value added tax is charged at the rate of 5%, but now it's charged at the rate of 7.5%. 7, 7 so it's a, it's a flat rate of 7.5% on the supply of goods and services, except those expressly exempted or uh, uh, ex except those expressly exempted under the hats. So oil and gas companies and government agencies are required to remit their value added tax on their purchases directly to the FIRS rather than pay it over to their vendors. So these are major tax legislation that you want to consider when coming into Nigeria. And, and, and now there are a number of incentives for businesses coming into Nigeria so that uh, to, to create a more robust investment climate, there are a number of incentives in the, available in the agriculture sector for instance, companies engaged in agriculture, agricultural trade or businesses are not liable to minimum tax. So there is tax exemption of the interest earned from agricultural loans, provided the moratorium is not less than 18 months and the rate of interest is not more than the base lending rate at the time of the loan. Also, there is no restriction on capital allowance claimable for companies in the agro-allied business and also VAT exemptions on tractors, plows and agricultural uh, machineries purchased for agricultural purposes. There's also incentives available to the energy sector. For instance, gas utilization incentives. Yes which may be renewed for further two years or it has 5% investment allowance. Also, there's an additional investment allowance of 25% on plant and machinery. And also there's period. There's is available in the power sector. So uh, investors in power generation company may enjoy a pioneer status incentives as well as gas utilization incentives. So exemption from VAT on plants and equipment acquired to generate electricity through the utilization of Nigerian gas. There's also the exemption from import duties on plants and equipment imported to generate electricity to the utilization of Nigerian gas. So there are incentives in a number of other areas and 
with your contact or to be able to also provide you with other available information regarding these incentives that are available to companies investing in certain sectors of Nigerian economy. Now, the dispute resolution, if we look at dispute resolution section in Nigeria, and this is where, this, is, this looks like where I'm going to conclude. The dispute resolution aspects in Nigeria, you can either insert arbitration clauses in your agreements. You can insert arbitration clauses in your agreements. That is, whenever a dispute arises, if you're entering into a partnership with a Nigerian company, whenever a dispute arises, parties can decide to go to arbitration. Or you can insert, after exhausting uh, mediation processes, negotiation, and things like that. Nigeria is welcoming to ADR processes and there's the Arbitration and Conciliation Act that provides for the enforcement of arbitration and also provides for, for guidelines to enforcing uh, arbitration in Nigeria. Nigeria also is a, a signed a signatory and has ratified the New York Convention on the Enforcement of Arbitral Awards, New York Convention on the Enforcement of Recognition and Enforcement of Arbitral Awards. So any arbitral award that, are, that is made even outside Nigeria can be recognized in Nigeria. And also any award, any arbitral award made in Nigeria will be given force to by the courts in Nigeria. Also, the Nigerian courts are welcoming to the recognized arbitral awards or mediated settlements as the case may be. The courts in Nigeria are the state high courts, depending on the nature of the dispute, of the commercial disputes, uh, the state high court, which if a dispute goes from the state high court and it wants to be appealed against, they can go to the court of appeal. And from the court of appeal, the final court in Nigeria is the Supreme Court, which gives the final determination, which adjudicates on the final determination of any dispute. So these are the major like, judicial uh, areas in uh, judicial uh, consideration in Nigeria. So some, some uh, regula regulators that you want, might want to have in mind when considering investments include the Bureau of Public Enterprise, the Department of Petroleum Resources, the DPR, that is when you are considering investing in the Petroleum Resources sec uh, section, the Federal Inland Revenue Service, the Federal Inland Revenue Service collects tax on behalf of the State and federal government, while the state internal revenue service collects tax on behalf of the respective state governments. I also want to consider the National Agency for Food and Drug Administration. So you have that, which deals with ensuring that they, um, they meet the standard uh, that is fit for human consumption. Also, the National Insurance Corporation the National Petroleum Investment Management Services, the Nigerian Communication Commission, the Nigerian Corporate Affairs Commission that we've talked about earlier that deals with the registration of companies in Nigeria or foreign companies in Nigeria, the Central Bank of Nigeria, the Nigerian Investment Promotion Commission, the Nigerian National Petroleum Commission, the Joint Tax Board, and the Securities and Exchange Commission. The Securities and Exchange Commission deals with listing of companies on the Nigerian Stock Exchange and trading uh, uh, Nigerian or foreign company stock. So basically, that's all for me on investing in Nigeria. And I'm sure if you have any other further questions, um, my email is amudatohibajib. We also want to also provide other contact information and details. Yes, so go now. Yes, to yes. him. Yes. Over to you. Can you? Yes. I believe you can start now with your presentation. Uh, thank we... you very much. Yes. Uh, thank you for that very elaborate uh, presentation on doing business in Nigeria. 
Um, I think it answers, covers most of the, the, the topics and issues related to uh, doing business in Nigeria and was very helpful. And uh, on my side, as far as uh, doing business in Uganda is concerned, uh, there are some similarities with the uh, Nigeria and some differences as I uh, explained. So I'll start by saying Uganda is a, uh, an East African uh, country located in East Africa and has a population of about 42 million people. And uh, it's, it's landlocked, so it borders Kenya, Tanzania, Rwanda, DRC, and South Sudan. And uh, Uganda is a young and rapidly growing population. Uh, our population is growing at about uh, 3% per annum and is expected to double by 2050. So we'll have twice the population. About half of our population are under the age of uh, 15 and about 80% are under the age of, uh, of 35. So it's a very young, very dynamic and uh, rapidly growing population. And um, Uganda is ma mainly an agricultural country. About 75% of, uh, of, of uh, our economic sector is in agriculture. And uh, agriculture, um, Uganda has consistently been ranked the number one tourism destination in the world uh, by several agencies. And uh, it boasts the source of the River Nile, the mountains of the moon, uh, the snow-capped mountains in Wenzori. It's one of the only few places where you can find mountain gorillas and chimpanzees in the world. And uh, a wild variety of uh, wild animals and uh, natural resources. So all the big five animals, lions, giraffes, zebras, you can find them in Uganda. And uh, basically most of the major attractions, Uganda lies astride the equator. Uh, so the, the climate is equatorial and uh, also tropical, very green. Uh, Uganda has a very rich variety of, uh, of uh, crops and plants. We have uh, multiple planting seasons in a year. Uh, so the land is very fertile. And um, also there's a variety of, of uh, food crops and cash crops grown. Our major cash crop export is coffee. And we're Africa's largest exporter of coffee. And we also have one of the best varieties of Arabica coffee in the world. Uh, Uganda is also a very diverse population. It's one of the most um, ethnically diverse countries in the world with over 65 different communities that speak different languages. Um, so agriculture and tourism are some of the main um, sectors in Uganda, uh, but also energy and mineral resources. Uh, Uganda discovered oil uh, some years back. We have about um, 1.4 billion barrels of uh, unexploited uh, oil and gas resources, which uh, the government is now working on, uh, on exploiting. So a number of companies are active in the oil and gas sector in Uganda, including Total, uh, Talo Oil, and uh, Sinok, which is the, the Chinese um, national oil company. Uh, including uh, many other players. So um, some of the sectors of interest for someone who wants to invest in Uganda uh, would include um, manufacturing. Manufacturing is a growing uh, sector in Uganda for people who would like to engage in manufacturing. We have a growing manufacturing sector, uh, real estate. At the moment, Uganda has a deficit of about 2 million housing units uh, that need to be built over the next uh, 10 years. So there's a big, um, um, basically big returns to be made in real estate uh, market. Services is also a big uh, sector 
in including ICT services, uh, professional services, business process outsourcing, um, and other related sectors. Education and health is also a major one because of our, the demographics of our population, very young population, so a lot of people are going to school. Over 15 million Ugandans are in school. Uh, and also health is uh, also a big sector for investment. And um, the investment climate in Uganda is a very positive one. Uganda has a liberal economy, uh, which means there are no restrictions on investments and uh, profit repatriation and the like. So anyone can set up a company and operate in Uganda and also repatriate uh, you know, their revenue uh, freely. And um, we operate a free market economy uh, with very minimal restrictions on uh, operations um, and investments. Um, foreign companies are allowed to um, acquire interests in land um, with the exception that they cannot uh, own the land, but they can hold uh, leasehold uh, properties um, and other tenures except um, outright ownership. And um, so that largely about the, the investment climate, the bodies um, charged with uh, um, overseeing investment in Uganda, the uh, primary body is the Uganda Invest, which was established by the uh, Investment Code Act, which uh, for which every foreign investor has to uh, register before they and acquire a license before they operate in Uganda. For foreign investors, they are required to invest a minimum of 100,000 US dollars to acquire an investment uh, license, and um, there are no uh, explicit limitations on sectors of investment. Uh, only that investments in uh, crops and uh, animal husbandry are prohibited for, for foreign investors um, directly, but such investments can be carried out with uh, local participation. Uh, at the moment, there are no restrictions on, um, on the number of locals that have to be um, employed by a foreign company. However, there was a bill that was passed by parliament a few days ago called the Local Content uh, Bill, which if assented to will become the Local Content Act, which requires uh, foreign investors to, foreign investors taking on public project, or public procurement to employ at least uh, 60% um, of, uh, of Ugandans in skilled employment and, uh, and about 100% in uh, unskilled um, employment. And um, the other points to note is that uh, um, upon acquiring a license from the investment authority, then a company has to register with the Uganda Registration Services Bureau and the process is not so different from that in Nigeria. It takes about two business days to register a business in Uganda, um, beginning with the name reservation and submission of uh, company forms such as memoranda and articles and um, notification of directors and address and so on and so forth. And um, the process is not yet automated as in Nigeria where you can uh, get a name reservation electronically. Uh, you can do that within one business day, uh, but the usual practice is to submit the forms at the uh, local um, service bureau office, and you can get a name reservation within four hours, uh, same as in Nigeria, and then you can submit the forms and uh, get your business registered in uh, about 40, eight hours. And um, the, the, the fees um, basically um, for company registration, stamp duty is 0.5% of the nominal share capital. 
and um, the registration fee uh, for companies is uh, is one percent um, of uh, of share capital uh, with an additional um, you know fees such as filing fees and so on for forms but it's a straightforward and and and, and simplified uh, process the uh, tax for businesses uh, business income is uh, set at at uh, 30% uh, for most uh, businesses uh, in terms of uh, of, uh, of business income uh, value added tax is at 18% withholding tax for foreign firms is uh, at 15% And um, there are also some incentives. Um, they are also can get uh, free land, tax holidays, usually up to uh, 10 years, and, and favorable conditions. Uh, so the government uh, takes a very keen interest in uh, providing a favorable climate for foreign direct investment, uh, especially for businesses from Nigeria. There's a Uganda-Nigeria Business Forum, which is jointly managed by the two ministries of foreign affairs. And the bilateral treaties with Nigeria include the um, on investment protection and promotion, bilateral air services, economic, scientific, and technological cooperation and trade. Those are some of the bilateral treaties that we uh, operate with Nigeria. Of course, there's also the Africa Continental Free Trade Area, uh, which came into force uh, last year under the aegis of the African Union. And uh, both businesses in Uganda and Nigeria will be able to uh, benefit from, um, from the common market that will be created by that, that treaty. And um, yeah, so um, as far as setup, I've already explained, it's a simplified process for, for setting up and um, there are no restrictions on foreign owned businesses uh, or, or subsidiaries of, of foreign owned businesses. Anyone can set up a business. Uh, the only restrictions are on uh, investments in crops and uh, animal husbandry for foreigners, uh, but that can be done with local participation. And uh, the process is simplified, takes uh, about two days, and I've explained the sub duty of 0.5% and registration fees of 1% uh, of share capital. The regulatory bodies I've already explained about the Uganda Investment Authority. There's also the Uganda Revenue Authority, which manages tax collection. Uh, the Uganda Registration Services Bureau, which I've talked about, which manages uh, business setup. And uh, there's the National Environment Management Act, which deals with environmental matters. So before you set up a business, you have to get um, licenses from the relevant line uh, departments and ministries in which you operate. So, you know, for example, if you're opening up a, an industry, you will have to get an environmental impact assessment uh, clearance and um, on top of the license from uh, uh, the investment authority. And if you want to operate in tourism, you will need to get a license from the tourism board and so on and so forth. And uh, I've already explained uh, some of the incentives and, um, and, and, and also the taxation. In terms of uh, dispute resolution, uh, we have a commercial court, a division of, uh, of Uganda's High Court, which deals uh, specifically with uh, commercial matters. And um, all commercial and civil matters in Uganda are required to go through mandatory mediation before they go to litigation. So mediation for uh, um, up to two months uh, for parties to be able to settle their disputes. 
And uh, about 80% of disputes that go to the commercial court are settled uh, through mediation. Uh, there's also um, alternative dispute resolution. Parties may enter into um, dispute resolution, um, uh, you know, treaties or, or clauses in their agreements. And uh, we have an Arbitration and Conciliation Act under which um, parties may resolve their disputes through the Center for Arbitration and Dispute Resolution. There's also a new body that was established uh, last year called uh, the um, International Center for Arbitration and Mediation in Kampala, abbreviated as ICAMEC, uh, but also parties can choose uh, individual or independent arbitrators, conciliators, and mediators uh, who can mediate uh, in, their, in their disputes. So the legal framework for arbitration is existent uh, and also it's institutionalized within the court system. Uh, mediation is mandatory before parties can go to litigation. It's only when parties do not agree that they um, uh, the matter can be then forwarded to uh, to litigation, and um, uh, the, the courts are quite independent and operate freely. The only uh, challenge is that sometimes some matters take long. There's a bit of case backlog, which is why alternative dispute resolution is encouraged. And um, yes, so. Um, I think uh, those are some of the major issues. Uh, as far as the ease of doing business in Uganda is concerned, in 2019, the ease of doing business report by the World Bank ranked Uganda 116 out of 190 countries. Compared to Nigeria, which was uh, ranked 131, Uganda has a better ease of doing business uh, ranking and also the corruption perception index in for 2019 by Transparency International. Uganda was ranked 137 out of 180 countries with a rank of uh, 28. And uh, compared to Nigeria, which ranked 146 out of 180 countries. So uh, favorably, Uganda ranks well in terms of uh, of ease of doing business, uh, but also uh, transparency. And uh, like I said, Uganda is open for, for investments um, in the, our major sectors of agriculture, tourism, oil and gas, and, um, and, and manufacturing. Um, and the government uh, now operates uh, e-government services, where a lot of government services can be acquired online. There's a one-stop center for, for investors and businesses where you can basically acquire all the business licenses and approvals within the same uh, place, such as business registration, tax clearance, um, and um, investment licenses, and so on and so forth, which has eased um, uh, business operations and registrations and investments. Uh, also, Uganda is a member of the East African community, which has a population of about 160 million people. And there's a, an East African common market uh, through which U Ugandan uh, companies can uh, trade freely with East African countries of Kenya, Tanzania, Rwanda, Burundi, and now South Sudan. Um, Uganda is also a member of COMESA, the common market for Eastern and Southern Africa, where Uganda can also trade freely between those countries. Uh, travel between those countries uh, is also non-restricted for, for citizens, but also uh, residents uh, who have, um, you know, permits that allow them to travel across the region. So investing in Uganda not only gives you access to the Ugandan market of 42 million, but also to the wider East African and uh, Central African 
uh, market. Uganda's um, economy has been growing steadily at uh, an average of six to seven percent uh, annually, and um, there's uh, an increase in infrastructure uh, development by the government. Electricity and roads is now uh, increased connection for for electricity and and also infrastructure. So it's um, a positive environment for, for investment and doing business. Um, and uh, a lot of investors uh, are present um, in Uganda and the, the climate is, 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 is largely uh, favorable. I think unless there are any um, questions or, or or, or, or queries uh, that largely covers um, investing in Uganda um, and the investment climate. Of course, for any further questions, I can be reached by email at uh, donaldmasa at gmail.com and also on Twitter at donaldmasa. Um, yeah, and uh, it's been a pleasure addressing doing business in Uganda uh, with you, Mr. Tohib, and the viewers of your program. Very brilliant, uh, comprehensive. I mean, you are able to touch all aspects that is crucial to investors. Uh, anyone who is willing to know more about system and legislative uh, system in Uganda, uh, was able to touch or call with such uh, presentation. Yes, uh, I would I'd like you to give uh, the, the viewers your, your information, contact details, should they want to contact you for further information about anything relating to legal aspects in Uganda. Uh, so yes, can you please give them the contact details? Uh, thank you, like I said, uh, my email is at donaldmasa, donald, M-A-S-A, at gmail.com, and uh, also uh, on, on Twitter. Uh, at Donald Massa, M W A S A, um, also on LinkedIn. Um, so anyone who's interested can reach me on those um, on those different channels, um, and I'd, I'd be happy to um, answer any questions or assist anyone who would be interested in the topic of doing business in Uganda. Yes, I know Donald is very active on LinkedIn. So any viewer should, should reach out to him on LinkedIn and he will be willing to, to answer any question and give you further advice about your business and any, any other thing that you want to do in Uganda in terms of investment, in terms of business advice and other related uh, information and activities. So once again, Dona, I thank you very much for your time and for, for attention. For, for this detailed analysis and report and for this well articulated presentation that you just gave on this call. And I must really say that uh, you are, you've been very wonderful. So the first time I met you, you appeared very intelligent and very uh, coherent in your presentation and your doings. And I really, really thank you very much for your time and attention. Yes, so uh, I know that if there are questions that they will be directed to you, uh, I know a lot of people are eager to ask you questions and, and I'm very sure that as, as questions come about, I'm also going to direct to your email uh, so that you can provide them, you can provide further information to, to viewers and, uh, and listeners. So thank you once again, Donald. Thank you for, for, for this, for, for your time. Thank you for your presentation. I'm really, really, really grateful. Thank you so much. Thank you too. It's been a pleasure. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Yes. So uh, that's that's it on episode one of the last series, doing business series, and uh, we just examined doing business in Nigeria and Uganda with myself from Dr. Ivan Donald Massa from Uganda, reporting live from Uganda, and giving a viewers advice, business advice on doing business in Nigeria and Uganda. And if you have further questions, as I said earlier, my email is amodatoib at gmail.com. You can always reach me also on WhatsApp uh, 
uh, with the number on my various social media platforms at Amoda Toib on LinkedIn at Toib Amoda Esquire. And uh, my email, you can always reach me there. And I'm really, really eager to answer your question and also to provide you with further information. Yes, yeah, so thank you very much, everyone. Thank you for this name and do have a wonderful day. Yes. Goodbye.